Hey friends, it's Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead and I'm back with another week of the Pantry Challenge, the Three Rivers Challenge. This is something that I host every year through the months of January and February. It is a pantry challenge where we purpose to not spend any money on groceries and try to use up the food that we work so hard to preserve during the last year's growing season. And if you've been following along um, using the hashtag Three Rivers Challenge, you can see everybody else who's participating both here on YouTube and on Instagram. The great thing about this challenge is that everybody makes their own rules. Some people are allowing a small budget for things like dairy or some uh, raw produce or their meat or whatever it is they weren't able to put up enough of during last year. So you make your own rules, you can join in at any time, and the goal is just to save some money, to have less food waste, to come up with some creative ways to use up the food that we've preserved, and to just eat seasonally and be more healthy. And one of the benefits that I've noticed already this year in the challenge, I've lost five pounds in just six weeks of eating this way, simply because I don't have snack foods in the house. Um, if you followed us for a while, you know that I have some food issues with gluten and soy and sugar. So a lot of the baked goods that I bake for my family, I can't eat myself. So I typically just stick to the protein source and the vegetables and the other side dishes that I can eat when I cook a meal. And then sometimes if I'm still hungry because I didn't get to eat the breads and things, I might have snacks in between meals, maybe some chips and salsa or something like that. But since we're doing a pantry challenge and I'm not um, able to purchase those snacks, we're out of them, I haven't been snacking between meals and that's been great. I've been able to lose some of this weight that hasn't budged since I've had Benjamin. It's a great way to start the new year. So. There's one a benefit of this, this challenge too, is that it sort of resets your body into um, eating more of the healthy meals that you cook and less snacking in between just because those snacks aren't available in the house. And this is probably the way I should eat all throughout the year. <laughs> but it's tempting when you have those convenience foods and those snacks in the house to just nibble on them in between meals uh, when you get a little hungry. So anyways, that's a big blessing that I've seen. We're also um, moving through foods at a great rate here. Some of the grains that I've had in storage, um, we're starting to grind down and, and cycle through, and that's a wonderful thing. That was one of my goals. We, this week, were able to completely clean out the deep freezer that we have in the house. This freezer mostly contained things like um, freezer jam and some pie filling, anything that I can that maybe doesn't seal that I just wanna stick in the freezer. Um, just random bits here and there. And a lot of that I've been able to put in the freeze dryer this week or we thawed out and we ate up. And finally that freezer was completely empty. We are gonna gift that to a friend. We got it out of the house. And because of that, I was able to move the freeze dryer that was in our kitchen here using up space and move that cart into the spot where that freezer was. And it's a huge blessing for my family. The freeze dryer has now made it so that we do not need to have that third deep freezer. Um, and so that's a huge blessing. That was one of my goals in doing the pantry challenge was to eat enough from our freezers to, to accomplish that. So anyways, all right, enough of that. This week, I'm gonna show you once again my plan. I'll show you my meal plan for the week and then show you how we kind of stuck to it. Once again, I am not um, showing you every meal that we make throughout the week at this point of the challenge, just because it would be redundant. At this point, I've been showing you meals for over six weeks, I think, or a total of six weeks, and there are gonna be some duplicate meals. I'm not that creative. I don't have hundreds of recipes to pull from, so um, just so that I'm not showing you things that I've already shown you in previous videos, we'll just skip over those days. So anyways, let's get started. Let me show you what we did this week. All right, so here is my list that I made this week of all the leftovers in the fridge, items in the pantry, and items in the freezer that I wanted to use up in making my meal plan, and here's what I came up with. Pop-tarts on Monday morning for breakfast, and then we'll have some wild rice soup, and we'll have some flank steaks, and then an angel food cake for dessert. Then on Tuesday, we're gonna have chia pudding and eggs, homemade layer bars, and some chili and cornbread. We'll have oatmeal with blueberry pie filling, a mystery soup that I found, and then pizza. Then we're gonna have pumpkin bread, chicken and noodles with some gluten-free brownies and a stir fry with a pear pie. And then Friday is apple fritters, leftovers, and crock pot ribs. And we'll try to stick to this plan as much as possible, but sometimes things change and we just go with it. 
All right, and here on Sunday, I'm trying to work through some apples. These are storage apples that we bought in October from Adam's grandpa's old orchard. These um, look pretty good for being from October. You can see some of them are a little wrinkly that you can tell they had frozen in the fridge, and then some of them look perfect for eating. So I'm just kind of picking through and getting out the ones that look wonderful. And those we'll put in a drawer in our fridge in the kitchen for the kids to snack on this week. And then the ones that are a little wrinkly, I will go ahead and turn into some sauce. But we're still going strong. We have about two bushels of apples left out in the fridge out there to eat. And then we ended up making some sauce out of this. I'm doing it the lazy way and leaving the peels on just because it saves me time and the peels have extra nutrition in them. So I'm just blending the cooked apples up in my blender. And little Benji here is enjoying snacking on an apple while I work. I love it. Little babies, they give a thumbs up with their pointer finger. It's so cute. All right, and so we ended up with nine quarts of applesauce. And let's go ahead and get ready for breakfast now. I made two servings of my pie crust, so a total of four crusts. And we're going to make homemade Pop-Tarts today. So all I'm doing is rolling out the crust and then I'm cutting it with my pizza cutter into kind of a Pop-Tart shape. These two rectangles. I'm putting a little bit of freezer jam that I thawed out. I have some blueberry freezer jam and I also have some peach that we're going to use as our filling for our Pop-Tarts. So I just put a little in the middle and then I stick another pie crust on top. And then we're going to press around the edges with a fork and that will make a little Pop-Tart shape. The kids are really excited about this today. I haven't made these in a really long time. So there's my peach freezer jam that we're using for some of them. And then the kids will have a choice of both flavors. And I love my little helpers here. They're just keeping me company while I'm working and helping to keep Benji out of trouble so I can get this done. This is not a quick breakfast to make. This is definitely a lengthy process, but these would do well if you made a bunch ahead of time and then froze them and then you could just pull out a batch when you were ready. Now make sure you make some little steam holes with a fork in the top of them and then we're just going to bake them in the oven on about 350 um, for maybe 20-25 minutes. It doesn't take as long as a pie for that to completely bake. You just want your um, little Pop-Tart tops to be slightly browned and, and that will do it. So there's what they look like before they go into the oven. We're going to make the icing now for the top. We're using the leftover blueberry jam. It was kind of watery and just mixing it with some powdered sugar that we powdered ourselves using um, cane sugar in the blender. And we're just mixing that together into kind of an icing. This was David's idea to use the jam and it turned out wonderful nice and thick you don't want this like a, a glaze you want it definitely an, an icing consistency while the pop tots are baking we're going to work on some eggs still working through those water glassed eggs our hens are starting to pick up and laying so i've got to use these water glassed eggs up before they go um, or before we don't need them anymore because pretty soon our hens will be laying you know, dozens of eggs a day, and then these will just be sitting in storage. So we're eating eggs every day for breakfast until we <laughs> use these up. And today I have the rest of that leftover failed batch of mayonnaise that I used last week. We're just going to use the rest of this in our scrambled eggs. And then uh, there's always a helper eager to whip those eggs up for me. For some reason, kids just love this. And grateful to have a big helper there to keep him from spilling it because that's always the the bad part about having your children help. You want their help, but you also don't want to waste those eggs. So <laughs> just making sure that he doesn't spill. And then of course, Levi wanted his turn and he is such a good helper. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna scramble those up on the stove and then that's what we will serve with the Pop-Tarts. Here's what the Pop-Tarts look coming out of the oven and they can it can be kind of hard to get off of the cookie sheet. That jam can kind of make them sticky, but you just do your best to get them off. And then now we're just going to take a little bit of our glaze after the Pop-Tarts have cooled a little bit and just put a little dollop on top of each one and kind of spread it out. And then, of course, we have John here who is enjoying looking at himself in the camera while I'm doing this. But um, the best part about being a mom with all of these children to feed is that you're never bored 
when you're working in the kitchen. There is always someone to entertain you or talk to you or help you. And that is a blessing. Life is never dull. <laughs> so here is what the Pop-Tarts look like when they're all done. And these kids are very eager to dig into these. And, you know, not as pretty as store-bought Pop-Tarts, but they are definitely a healthier version of it. And I think the kids are going to enjoy this. So this is a fun treat on a Monday morning. On Mondays, we tend to have slower mornings where we kind of sleep in a little bit and take our time. So I was only able to make a breakfast this involved and in-depth because we weren't in a rush to get everything done and get school started at a specific time. So you could tell, I think John John likes the Pop-Tarts. <laughs> They're a little hot still, I think, so he's struggling to eat it, but I think he enjoyed that first bite. And just one of these treats. You know, just because we're doing a pantry challenge doesn't mean we have to be deprived of fun food. We have the ingredients in the house to make these fun foods. It just takes a little effort on our part to make them. And um, so much of what we buy from the grocery store is about convenience and we can have the same foods if we take the time to make them but I will definitely say that convenience is nice to have you know on busy days but there is a price you pay for everything and with that convenience often comes preservatives and additives and things that might not be as healthy for you so you can make pop tarts and they can be delicious all right Let's work on lunch. We're going to do a fridge dump soup because I had lots of containers that I need to clear out of my fridge. This looks like a batch of kind of roast and vegetables that was sitting in the back of the fridge. Here are some roast drippings from last week that need to be used up. Some leftover green beans from a dinner. We have lots of wild rice left over from last week. Here's some leftover spinach and some leftover potatoes and sausage. So we're just gonna mix all this together and see what we come up with. Gotta love these just mixed up soups. They always taste so good. And this right here is why you don't waste those drippings from your roast. The dripping is the fat and gelatin and everything that comes out of the bottom of your roasting pan. And look at that, look at all that gelatin. It's so good for you and that would just be wasted if you threw it away. So save it and add it to your soups or your rice or your noodles. Lots of nutrition in there. So I decided to only use half of the wild rice because it was a bit much. But we got everything else in our pot here. We just added a little water to kind of have extra liquid. We're going to get that fat melted down in here. And then we'll salt and pepper as needed, just depending on how much was left in these drippings. All right. And right now we're going to work on some jello for tomorrow's lunch. Homemade jello without the food dye and all the sugar. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take one quart of my grape juice and put it cold in my pan, and one quart I'm going to put it on the stove. I can my grape juice with the whole Concord grapes in it, so I do have to strain those out like this. So I just strain them, and then those grapes can be fed to the chickens. If you wanted to be really frugal, you could save those and turn them into a jam or make something else out of it, but we have so much grape jelly on our shelves that those the chickens are going to enjoy today. And like I said, we have the cold juice in our pan. And what we're going to do, um, there, there is a way to do this where people will take the gelatin and put it directly into the cold juice and mix it around. But I always find I end up with a layer of like hard, clumpy gelatin at the bottom of my jello when I do that. So I prefer to mix my gelatin into my hot juice that's on the stove. I find it melts and disintegrates into it a little better. And then I take the hot gelatin and then pour um, that into the cold juice and then mix it all together. So you can do it either way. I just tend to have better results in terms of texture when I add my gelatin powder to my hot juice. And let me show you how I do that. So I just have my steaming hot pan here. I put a spoon in one hand and a fork in the other hand and I just kind of sprinkle my gelatin into the hot pan and stir it around as I'm sprinkling it in. And that prevents the gelatin from clumping up into like a big glob. If you just pour your gelatin in and then stir it all in at once, you will end up with clumps. So just sprinkle it in slowly, stir it as you go. And as I'm stirring this in, this was two quarts of juice. I'll probably add a total of a half a cup of this pastured beef gelatin 
to the juice as I'm sprinkling it in. So about a half a cup of gelatin to your two cups of juice, remember, or two quarts of juice. Remember, one quart of the juice is cold in my 9 by 13 pan. The other quart is what is warmed up in the pot that I warmed on the stove. So just getting all that gelatin stirred in. This is what it looks like when it's all done. The juice is thickened now, kind of like a jelly texture before you can it. And I'm just going to dump the hot into the cold and stir it around. Let me show you what that's going to look like. But always a buddy here. Today, Benjamin is my jello buddy. He's showing me the blocks that he has built. Here's what it looks like when you pour that mixture in and get it all stirred around. And then we're just going to put this in the fridge, let it set overnight, and we can have this for lunch tomorrow. A healthier version of jello than the stuff you can get in the boxes. And then I've also been working with beets today. These are going to go in the freeze dryer to make more beet powder. I also found this angel food cake mix. I get this at a local bulk Amish food store. And I keep a couple of these in my pantry just for days when David, oh, look, beet juice all over my fingers. <laughs> um, just keep this uh, for days when David isn't in the mood to bake. David makes a wonderful angel food cake from scratch, but these are just super convenient. All you have to do is add water. There's no dairy in these. So I do keep these for days where I'm busy and I had it. So I'm going to use it up. And all you do is literally add the water to this mix Put it in your stand mixer with the whisk and let it whisk up. And then I do not have an angel food cake pan. We just use this, this cake pan and it works out just fine. So we just kind of dollop it in there and then we will bake it. And this is a really simple way to have a dessert here tonight. Always someone also to lick the spoons. <laughs> Usually there's people fighting over it and we have to do a paper, scissor, rock. All right, let's get back to lunch. This is what that fridge dump soup looked like. It smelled amazing and all of those flavors. There was a garlic flavor, an onion flavor, lots of veggies in there. Just really good nutrition that just came from the leftover bits that were in the fridge from all of last week's meals. So essentially like a free meal <laughs> that came from the fridge. Everybody gets a little bowl and the weather has been pretty cold this week so this is a nice oh look at these <laughs> look at these kids all right this is a nice way to warm up on a cold day and this will fill bellies soups are such an easy lunch for us in the winter while we're busy doing school and things you can just have it on the stove and then it's ready for you after you get done with school otherwise lunch can feel really rushed some days and here you can see Levi trying to hug <laughs> the cake that just came out of the oven. We're going to get this all cooled down. We're going to have this with dinner tonight. And then since this isn't an angel food cake pan, I have to do a little bit of work to get this out. But eventually it does come out as long as you grease it well enough and it will work. I think the kids will enjoy this. So speaking of dinner, let's go ahead and show you what we made. Just a simple dinner, canned corn, some fried potatoes, and then we had some marinated flank steaks. These were marinating overnight in a balsamic vinegar, honey, um, a homemade um, peach vinegar, and then I also had some olive oil and Italian seasoning just kind of all mixed together. And then we had some more of that blueberry pie filling left, so we went ahead and made another glaze just like we made for the Pop-Tarts, and we went ahead and poured that over the angel food cake because why not? <laughs> the kids... Um, We'll enjoy that blueberry flavor. And then there's what that cake looked like. Just a simple store-bought mix. I think we have one more of these mixes left in the pantry that we'll save for another day here in a couple weeks that will be a treat. So Let's start thinking about tomorrow's breakfast. I'm going to make a chia seed pudding, and I have made chia seed pudding for you guys in a previous video, and someone commented and said that they have better results with texture when they put it all in the blender. So that's what I'm going to try today. That will prevent chia seeds from clumping in the bottom of your jars. And speaking of jars, people asked where I get my little jars here that I make my pudding in, and these came with my electric yogurt maker um, so they're not something you can purchase separately, but I will show you the yogurt maker next week. All right, so I have 14 tablespoons 
of chia seeds in the bottom of my blender because I'm going to make seven cups and it's two tablespoons per cup of pudding. And then I'm going to add one quart of homemade cashew milk to the 14 tablespoons of chia seeds. And I'm also adding this leftover peach freezer jam. I have one and a half little pints of it here that we're just going to scoop in to the blender, mix it all up, and this is what it looks like. And then we're just gonna pour that into our jars and these will sit in the fridge overnight and I'll show you what they look like tomorrow. I'm also gonna make some apple Lara bars, like a homemade version of a Lara bar. This is my recipe, I cannot remember where I got this. This is not my original recipe, but I'm gonna use leftover cashew pulp from making homemade milk. I'm gonna use that in place of the walnuts because I do not have walnuts in the house. And then I've got everything in here. And in place of applesauce, I'm actually going to use some apple butter. I have about three quarters of a jar of apple butter sitting in the fridge. And we're going to use this instead of opening up a new jar of applesauce. So we're just going to get all of this in the food processor. Now, this is going to be a little more wet than the original recipe. I can already tell because obviously the cashew pulp was wet to begin with but I'm just hoping that by adding some extra cashews, this is all gonna work out. And then I'm just pressing this into a bottom, the bottom of my dish here. I lined it with some parchment paper so that it won't stick and it will come right out tomorrow. We're gonna also stick this in the fridge and that will be ready tomorrow. Speaking of tomorrow, it is morning time and we are eating some of that chia seed pudding. Um, the kids, we have a busy morning this morning. Someone is coming to pick up a puppy um, we just have a couple puppies le left here from the litter that Leela had in December, and someone was coming to pick one up. And so we had Adam home for a while this morning until the people came. And so everybody was holding off on eating breakfast, and they were just having their chia seed pudding if they were hungry until the rest of breakfast was done. So here's what that chia pudding turned out like, and it did not clump. It worked out much better in the blender. And then I just made a simple egg casserole. I've shown you egg casseroles many times. That's what we had for breakfast. And then for lunch, here is that jello I made yesterday. We're just sectioning this off, cutting it off into pieces that the kids can grab. We like to make jello as snacks. Sometimes I just make it as a treat and we have it with lunch. That gelatin is really good for the gut. And there's no sugar in this. This is just the grape. Uh, grape juice and the gelatin and the kids really enjoy that so that is the first thing that they are going to have for lunch everybody's trying a little piece we're just having a bunch of snacks today let me show you how those homemade Lara bars turned out and once again I knew these were going to be a little more wet than usual usually they're hard when I pull them out of the fridge you can see they kind of solidified but they're still a little sticky and wet so I if I had it to do over again I would have added a little bit of maybe coconut flour or something like that to it to kind of firm it up a little bit but it will definitely work it's just a little more messy and sticky than I would like so we just slice this into little bar shapes that the kids can hold in their hand and eat and as I mentioned normally if you follow the original recipe it would be firmer but it still worked out. You can see they can still hold it with your hand. It just was a little stickier in their hands than I would normally like. So everybody is going to eat a Lara bar and some Jello, and then I believe some of them got out an apple. We're just kind of snacking on things today. And we had bought some paper plates when we thought we were going to have a power outage in a snowstorm, so I wouldn't have to do dishes. And now, since they are in the cupboard, I figured... Why not use them today for this meal to save me some time? So, all right. So the next day we're working on breakfast. I'm having some oatmeal and we put in a jar of thawed blueberry pie filling from the freezer. We also did a jar of coconut cream and we're mixing that up. And then I'm also working on lunch today. I found this frozen, it looks like a chicken and corn, maybe some tomato soup. I'm assuming it was a kind of Mexican flavored soup. So we're adding another quart of home canned um, rooster meat to it. And that had a little broth with it. So just getting that in and that will add a little extra protein to what we already had in that frozen soup. We're also going to add some leftover canned corn that was from a meal. Why not? It was in the fridge and needed used up. So that will work wonderfully. 
And then we also had some other odds and ends in the fridge. I have just a little bit of leftover pickled peppers and vegetables and things. And then I figured we'll add a pint of home canned salsa to it. We're just going for a kind of a Mexican flavored vegetable and chicken soup. We have a busy day. We are going sledding with some friends. And so it's breakfast time, but I'm getting this soup in the crock pot and putting it on low so that by the time we get home around lunchtime, we'll have a nice hot soup for the kids to eat as they thaw out from sledding. And then here is that oatmeal after it cooked. Once again, that was just blueberry pie filling and a can of coconut cream. We've got our soup in the crock pot and now it is time to eat breakfast. Today we're going sledding with our homeschool group. We have a group of families, maybe five or six families, and we try to get together a couple times a month and do either a fun activity like sledding or sometimes we do arts and crafts together. And then once a month we go to a local church's gym and we um, let the kids play games like volleyball and basketball. And it's just a, a fun way for our kids to see their friends and to form some relationships outside of the sibling relationships here in the house socialization is really important to us um, for our children and so we just today is a great day to go sledding with their friends and to spend time with our friends all right well we're back from sledding and this is what that soup looked like it was in the crock pot all day on low and i decided it needed some extra carbs in it so i have some freeze-dried rice which freeze-dried rice essentially turns into instant rice since it was pre-cooked and so if we add this rice to the soup it will as soon as it rehydrates you'll have cooked rice in there so that was a blessing to have on the shelf just kind of stir it around and once it all gets wet that really bulked that soup up a little bit and so everybody got a bowl you can see the chicken the salsa and veggies and everybody was frozen from you know two hours of sledding they needed to really thaw out. And since this had a little spice in it, it really did, did the job. So some of the kids had a little extra crackers too that they added. We are almost out of saltines. So next week, it looks like if we want crackers, we are going to be making our own. So I will take you along for the process of making crackers. This is what we had for lunch. And then the kids were really, you can see I had taken a quick video on my phone. They were exhausted. All that sledding. And these children all crashed as soon as they ate lunch. Yeah, all worn out. All right, and it's the next day, and we're working on breakfast. I um, was very tired the night before and forgot to thaw my sausage. So we have frozen <laughs> sausage patties that I am working on cooking up. And we're going to have sausage with some eggs today. And th these sausage patties, we have a friend who raises pork for us um he is a, a pig farmer and so we buy three whole hogs from him every year and this this came from him it's just flavored with some sage our hens are finally laying again this was one day's worth of eggs which is the most eggs we've gotten in a day since probably last november so things are looking up spring is around the corner so we're going to go ahead and use fresh eggs today instead of the water glassed ones we're just going to cook them kind of over hard, I guess, um, in the skillet with the leftover sausage grease. And then I also opened two jars of canned pears. And we have a huge dinosaur battle happening on the, the kitchen counter here while I'm working on breakfast. Very intense dinosaur battle. <laughs> so cute. So anyways, some canned pears with our sausage and eggs. And this is what we're having for breakfast. We have a busy day planned today in the house. We've been doing lots of rearranging this week of furniture in different rooms. And so the next time you see us having a meal in here, this kitchen is gonna look a little different. But for now, for meals, we've tended to huddle around this table every day. And we're gonna expand and add a little space here in the kitchen. But first, let's work on lunch. The girls decided to make this homemade brownie mix. This is something my mom had brought over one time um, when she brought a meal and we just never got around to making it. So today is the perfect time to make it. It looks like it has some veggie powder in it. It's a vegan, um, allergy friendly brownie mix. So super easy. It's a fun activity. The girls can just follow the directions on the back with no input from me and get this made. 
And like I mentioned, I was busy rearranging some rooms and cleaning rooms and moving furniture. So this was a blessing that they were handling lunch for me. As you can tell, this is the week of just finding everything in the back of the pantry, the mixes and the boxes of stuff that need used up, and I'm just trying to clear it all out. So we also found this one box of zucchini pasta. It's a panay pasta that was in the back of the cupboard. It's not enough for one meal for our family, so I'm adding some rice pasta that's also panay to it, and we'll just add enough to make a full meal. I have a jar of home canned beef roast. This is homegrown our beef here, and we're just gonna make some kind of beef and noodles for lunch. So there we go, we have our pasta all cooked up. We're just adding that jar of broth and meat. And then I decided to also add a little bit of, this is freeze dried beef broth. It turns into a powder like this, and I'm just adding some of that to kind of thicken this up just a little extra nutrition, and I have this broth shelf stable, so why not use it? All you have to do is add a little water to get it to the desired texture. This has been the year of experimenting with our freeze dryer and figuring out what we like, and this freeze dried broth is really convenient. It's a convenient way to store it. We're also gonna add some dried parsley to the beef and noodle mixture, and some freeze dried garlic scape powder to give it a little garlic flavor. Just kind of stir it around, add some salt and pepper and just a quick and easy lunch. So simple as that, the girls, there's the brownies that they made, that was nice. And then we have half a gallon of apple cider that was in the freezer that they're gonna have with it. And here is the kitchen all rearranged. As I told you, we were doing some rearranging and so we moved a little toddler table into this area of the kitchen and now that's where the little boys are eating during meals. Gracie's given the thumbs up. She said that their allergy-free brownies turned out delicious. Oh, and I was exhausted this day after doing all of the furniture rearranging, so I'm just hanging out with my little boys here, laying on the couch while they entertain me. <laughs> I love this little wild tribe of little boys. They are so sweet. Let's work on dinner now. We've got some rice cooking on the stove. I'm just making some kind of stir fry here. I have some ham steaks that I kind of sliced up and I have these frozen peppers from last year's garden that need used up. And so we're just getting all of that cooked up. We're gonna add some frozen broccoli and some frozen spinach and probably some garlic. There is some frozen garlic scape puree. We're gonna add that. We'll add some salt and pepper some onion powder, and this turns into just a really quick stir-fry meal. There's the rice, and then the kids will have this in a bowl. Some of them prefer to have soy sauce. Normally, I would have coconut aminos with this, but I ran out in like the second week of the pantry challenge. I am really missing my coconut aminos, and we'll always keep more in the house now, but this was a really easy meal that the kids seemed to enjoy. You can't go wrong with a stir-fry. It's a great way to use up just odds and end vegetables that are in the freezer that need to be used up. Also a great way for the kids to practice using their chopsticks. It always makes a meal fun. <laughs> All right, let's work on tomorrow's breakfast. We are going to have, once again, our apple crisp recipe where we are ignoring the top half of the recipe and we are just going to make the bottom half because for the top half I found two bags of pear pie filling in the freezer yesterday when I was moving it around and I thawed it out. We have a little bit of buckwheat flour that was left over in the fridge and so I'm just going to add some oats and the remaining buckwheat flour and all the rest of these ingredients together. We are out of olive oil as of today. This is a huge pantry challenge mistake. I'm very upset about this because it's this is pure laziness. I've been using this olive oil in all of my cooking when I should have been using all of the beef tallow that I have out in my overflow fridge. So lesson learned, next year don't be lazy, don't use up all the olive oil in your cooking. But we will make do without the olive oil. I have other things, we have coconut oil, we have palm fruit shortening, we will be okay for the next couple weeks. So here is my crumble mix using the last of that olive oil. I have the pear pie filling in the bottom of my pan. I just sprinkled that buckwheat and oat mixture with the baking powder and other ingredients over the top, and we are gonna bake it in the oven. And while it's baking, we're gonna use the rest of these water-glassed eggs. And my grumpy little helper here, 
um, is going to help me get these cooked up. There's what the water glassed eggs look like. I've been lately just putting them in a colander and then I run them underwater to get all the lime mixture off of the outside of the eggshell. And then I crack them one by one into my bowl and my helper here is whisking them up. We added some Old Bay seasoning and some salt and pepper to the eggs. And then we are just gonna cook these in some cast iron on the stove. Always eager helpers willing to help me whisk the eggs. The baby is having a rough morning. He really wants to be held and it's hard to hold him. <laughs> so as I mentioned, I'm out of olive oil, so I'm using our rendered beef tallow. I did a video on how I render my tallow in lard, and you can see that in the description. But beef tallow is just cooked down beef fat. It is really healthy for you. It is a solid at room temperature, so you kind of have to scoop it out. You just... Get it in the bottom of your pan and it makes a great cooking fat. Now beef tallow is kind of different than lard. It does give off a bit of a beef flavor, but that's fine when you're adding it to something like eggs or potatoes or things. You wouldn't want to use a beef tallow for baking like you would a leaf lard or something like that. So this is primarily what we will use for a cooking fat until we use it all up. I'm really upset, like I said, that I've been using my olive oil for things like eggs when I should have been using this, but lesson learned, next year I'll do better in the pantry challenge. All right, here's what it all looks like, all cooked up. The kids will just have a scoop of eggs and a scoop of the buckwheat pear mixture, and this is what we are having for breakfast today. Just really simple, great way to use up some stuff that we have. I think everyone will enjoy this. And the boys are really enjoying having their own little table. They feel very, um, I guess, bit like big boys. And they have their own little table here that only they sit at. And it kind of contains their mess to this area, which I am really enjoying. It's working out great. I'm loving the new rearrangement of things in our house. It was a very productive week in that regard. Now, I'm not having the buckwheat mixture on days like this. I just eat the protein source so I'm having the eggs and the kids will eat that entire you know 9 by 13 dish all by themselves very easily and then as I mentioned we rearranged the house we're all enjoying now we moved the couch into the room where our dining table used to be and it's just a cozy little space now that all the kids are enjoying kind of hanging out in this room the house feels very refreshed and different all right let's work on dinner so I've got some potatoes that I've been boiling for mashed potatoes. I have some bacon grease. And once again, when you're a dairy-free family, the best way to make mashed potatoes is to scoop your bacon grease into it in place of butter. It makes a really tasty bacon-flavored mashed potato that is just wonderful. And then with our mashed potatoes, we are having spare ribs that have been cooking in a barbecue sauce. And this was just three racks of ribs, which... Um, ended up not being enough. In the future, I will do no less than four racks for our family for a meal, but it ended up working out in the end. And so we're going to have the spare ribs. I also did a quart of canned corn and ooh, look at my dirty stove. I need to clean up. It's always being used. There's never a chance to clean it. <laughs> so anyways, we've got the canned corn, we've got the ribs, and we've got the potatoes, and in the crock pot is one of my favorite ways to make ribs because the bones literally just slip right out. Let me show you. So I pull that rack of ribs out, and then I can just slip the bones out, which is really helpful because I do not like feeding bone-in ribs to my little guys. They just make a mess trying to eat it. So if I pull the, the bones out this way, then I can cut it up, and they can eat it with a fork, and it's just... A much more convenient way to feed this kind of meal to little ones. If they eat the ribs off the bone, there ends up being barbecue sauce everywhere. Their face, their clothes, everywhere. And then do not throw away this barbecued sauce and drippings from the ribs makes the best baked bean base. So I'm going to make baked beans next week. I'll show you how I use that next week. And here we go. This is dinner. Just the ribs, the potatoes, the corn, and this is all plated up for the kids. And you can really see the difference in how I plate things. This is um, in one of the big boys' plates, so they get a lot more meat and potatoes and corn, as you can see. And then here's the amount that maybe one of the girls would eat. 
So we plate a little less for them, and then you get down to the little boys, and that's how much one of them will eat. And then this is just the start. The kids will go back. Some of the big kids will come back and get even more mashed potatoes and even more corn if it's left. But as I mentioned, we should have had one more rack of ribs so that there would be seconds. Um, but there were no seconds for ribs tonight. That's okay. The kids just loaded up on the mashed potatoes and everybody was happy. I love crock pot meals. This is a great, it was a Friday night. and Sometimes by Friday, I'm just sick of cooking meals. So if I can get something in the crock pot in the morning that'll be ready for me by dinner time, it's just a huge blessing for me on a Friday night. Um, so I haven't converted to an instant pot yet, but I still do love my crock pot <laughs> quite a bit. All right, another great week. I am very pleased with what we were able to use up and with the meals we came up with. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys are enjoying following along. I have some big plans for next week. I think I'm gonna show you next week how to make um, dairy-free yogurt. I found when I cleaned out a freezer, my yogurt, yogurt starter that has been sitting there since last winter that I need <laughs> to use up and um, Winter is the time where I have the time to experiment with and do a lot of these things like make my own dairy-free yogurt and play around with some different types of baking and grind my own grains. A lot of times when I get busy with gardening season and preserving season, I kind of put that stuff away and um, default to some of the easier, more convenient foods that I cook my family. And so this will be a good opportunity for me to show you how I make my yogurt. So look for that next week. Um, yeah, and that's about it. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments. And I will see you next week, friends. Have a great week. Bye.